Hi, welcome to Channel Squared, where we connect with you, the divine, and channel here with you live. I'm Heather Marie, founder of Soulgate. And I'm Jody Lynn Craven, founder of Abundance Consciousness. And today we're on to part two, God and the devil. Oh, <laughs> we covered a lot of ground last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really did. And I think we kind of left it at where, like, maybe some of the experiences that we've had, um, in our work together, separately, you know, supporting others with some of that mischief that is, you know, that can go on when you're working in the spiritual realm. And I think that this is part of the reason that so many like spiritual advisors are maybe jumping ship or they are, you know, relinquishing back to more of a religious place as opposed to a like woo spiritual place. And I think it's comes from a place of fear, quite frankly, you Mm -hmm. know, they are afraid of, of what is happening and they're afraid of what it's going to mean for their soul when they leave this life experience. One of the things that uh, comes up for me a lot personally is I think about how my actions on this earth plane are going to impact my soul when I get to the other side, right? Like, have I led anybody astray? Have I injured anybody? Have I created a trauma or something that's going to have to be healed, like an imprint on their soul during this experience that I've had in this lifetime? And I try very hard to be very cognizant of how I support people because I don't want to create that. I don't want to be the healer in someone's story in another timeline that they're now having to past life regress and deal with the trauma so that they can move forward in their current lifetime. Like, I don't want to be that. Um, especially not in this lifetime with the awareness that I have um, of that. Now, right. my own personal experience, you know, I I I had very tumultuous past lives. If you've been on this show following our journey for any length of time, you know the type of shenanigans that my soul went through um, in other timelines. And those things I've had to really work on and like heal and, you know, drag out and like drag up and relive and go through all of those, you know, shenanigans again. And it was a painful experience. And, you know, after a while it starts to get funny because you're just like, oh God, here we go again. (laughs) Heather in a cage, you know, (laughs) but, but the fact is, is that, you know, when I'm doing my spiritual work, I, I'm very aware of the words that I am saying because I do not want to create a trauma for that soul in another timeline. Because as we all know, time is all happening all at once. It's just a difference of perspective, right? So like there's another iteration of me and you and Mm -hmm. you and you and you and all of us that are having a difference in experiences that what's happening right now could be influencing that other experience. And so I'm, because I'm so acutely aware of that, I really try to be cognizant of the things that I say. And I think that that's something that the spiritual community needs to adopt as a regular philosophy, you Mm -hmm. know, that do no harm, you know, credence, like just do not, don't jack people up, man. You know, you don't like jack what, people up. You don't have yeah. to worry about what's going to happen on the other side. You know, no, oh, it's kind of like what your parents taught you when you went somewhere, like leave the place better than when you found it. Right. You know, that should be the intention. Exactly. Leave people better than when you found it. And, and I want to really underline again, something else that you said, it was awareness. Um, because even some of the most advanced spiritual teachers i am using the quotation marks um (laughs) that i have seen have 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 dabbled in some things and weren't checking their shit 
they weren't, they didn't have protocols in place. They, you know, for as, for as aware as they, they are, they weren't even aware of the subtle changes in their energy body that were happening or the person that they were channeling or the entity that they were channeling or whatever it may be. I mean, they just weren't aware of it because let's face it, complacency happens and that's okay. This isn't a conversation to beat up because I've done it, you've done it, like, th- but it's an opportunity to learn. And this is an opportunity, if you're listening to this, to check yourself and then remind yourself in the future to continue to check yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we, uh, that I think a lot of people get into when they're first getting into like their spiritual awakening or having their spiritual awakening is they, sometimes they will go and they'll, they'll do something to create an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes this can be done in meditation. Sometimes it's done through like shamanic journey. Sometimes it's done with the assistance of, uh, plant medicine, like ayahuasca or, you know, mushrooms or, you know, uh, various, herbal remedies that can give you that altered state. And the thing about the the way in which you reach altered state is very important because when you have altered state and you are doing it with the use of plant medicine, you are you are you're opening a portal like you creating that altered state and and opening yourself up to have this awakening you are literally creating a portal directly to your soul and so you know i know that there's a lot of people who have used plant medicine to reach that altered state and i think that there are ways for you to have an altered state without the use of these uh, drugs. I mean, let's just call them what they are. They're drugs, right? So the, the thing is, is that when you, when you have altered state utilizing a drug versus altered state that you are actually in control of because you're not gone on the drugs, it gives a, a deeper awareness to your actual experience. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that have done an ayahuasca ceremony that was like, oh my God, I just threw up all the crap. Cool. So you had like a total like vomiting fest. Well, what did you, what did you experience? Like, what was the awakening? Like, what did you get from it? Oh, I just felt so empty afterwards. Like all the crap just came out okay, well, did you, did you, did you touch God? Like, did you reach some level of enlightenment or did you just torture the hell out of yourself for several hours? Yeah. You know, and it was almost like them close to death because they're vomiting themselves to death and having that like physical reaction was what they would consider an awakening. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, an awakening, a true awakening is seeing and touching the other side. That's an awakening. When I had my first awakening, and I've had many, many in this lifetime, but I had one that really stands out the most. And it was, I was learning Reiki. And I was on a Reiki cleanse, like spiritual cleanse. And so I was not allowed to do any energy work on anybody. And I wasn't allowed, uh, except for myself, myself and like the plants or the dogs or whatever, I was allowed to do them, but I couldn't work on any human. And, um, and so every day I was self-administering Reiki. And as I was doing this, I remember I was like, I don't know, like reclining back in like bed or whatever. And I was, you know, going through the various chakras. And at one point, I remember seeing like almost like a cloudy, smoky substance, but it was like really bright. Like the sun was behind it, like a cloud that the sun was behind. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there looking at it. And then all of a sudden, 
out from the clouds comes this face, right? And it was kind of like a, like a whitish blue color, right? Mm-hmm. It was like so, I don't know, angelic or something, right? And it was like the sweetest thing I had ever seen. And I was like, whoa, who are you, right? <laughs> and I wasn't afraid. I wasn't like, there was no fear at all with it. I was more like, oh my gosh, this is just the most amazing experience ever. And every time after that, I wanted to reconnect to that experience, right? And it wasn't very long. It was maybe just a matter of 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just this being looking at me through the clouds. And I was looking back and we had this moment where like we connected and I was like, holy shit, this is real. Like, this is real. This is a real thing. My imagination is not that good. Right. And so I had this moment of like, holy crap, this is real. Yeah. That is that awakening moment that you're like, oh, there is another side. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And your, your awakenings should be this, like, like awakening, right? Your eyes are open. You're suddenly seeing it shouldn't feel like your head is in a bucket for multiple hours. And then afterwards you're just exhausted and you're like, wow, that was so good. I totally think I found God that time, (laughs) you know? And the thing is, is that when you're doing these things and you're entering this altered state, you're opening a portal to the other side. Mm -hmm. Who's there on the other side? If you're all fucked up, how are you going to know? Yeah. hundred percent. And there's other things too that create portals. I think we've talked about this before, but you know, crystals can create portals. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there's like, a, like foods can probably create portals. Words can create portals. Like I, oh, interesting. This is coming into my awareness. Not that it is good or it is bad, but like there's, uh, no, I can't remember when it was. There was some point where I saw a TikTok video and it was about manifestation and whatever. And it was like, you take in one hand cinnamon and I think salt was in the other. And like, you blow it at your door in like, not at your door, but you stand at your door and face inside and you blow it. But I'm sure that that creates portal of energy. Right. And I think that if you're not mindful, you can invite in negative things. You can also invite in positive things. Lots of positive and amazing things can come through portals. Right. I think it just depends. Right. And I think that, you know, when you're, when you're doing spiritual work, because you are open to seeing whatever comes through, provided that you haven't placed protections in place to not have lower frequency things come through. When you do this, it, it leaves you vulnerable, Mm -hmm. right? And, and if you're not being a good gatekeeper for yourself, then anything can come through Mm -hmm. dead relatives, you know, spirits that don't realize that they're dead, you know, low vibrational other beings. I mean, I don't, I don't know when I go to Vegas, it's a thing, right? Like that place is a place. It is like, you've got the, the dead mafia guys hanging around everywhere. You've got, you know, hookers that have been murdered everywhere. You know, you've got like all of these dead people that don't even know that they're dead, just hanging around, right? And so when people go there, and it's like everyone falls off their rocker, right? They they get really wasted. They spend a lot of money. They, you know, sex is like a theme. You know, it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm making myself sound like a total lame here. Um, but no, it's kind of no. gross, yeah. right? Like energetically, it's a gross place to be. It's fun, And then if you look on the airplane, when you're leaving, 
everyone is hungover, broke, feels gross, you know, because they've literally contaminated not only their physical bodies yeah. with the drugs, the alcohol, the smoke, all of the things that they did, all the partying, the lack of sleep, all the stuff, right? But they also contaminated their energetic vibration because they were in a cesspool of low vibe things. Mm -hmm. You know, alcohol lowers your vibration. Smoking lowers your vibration. Drugs lower your vibration. I don't care what kind of drugs they are. They lower your vibration. They poke holes in your aura, right? Mm -hmm. So like if you are having these experiences, it's going to lower your vibrational set point. And sometimes it takes a lot of work to get out of that set point into a new set point. Yeah. So one of the things that I work with, with, you know, my students, you know, this is about raising your vibrational set point and keeping it there so that you don't interact with all of these guys down here. You're interacting with everybody up here. Mm -hmm. If you live down here, you're going to interact down here. If you live up here, you're going to interact up here. Mm -hmm. And that is where I think a lot of spiritual like gurus, experts start to break and like crumble is because somehow they dip and then they're like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm unsure. Notice the fear, all of that stuff. You know, it's interesting as you're talking about Vegas, um, like different memories have popped in and I used to go to Vegas every year for a conference and everything like that. And I remember the second last time that I went, so this is before you and I were working together, but the second last time that I'd went, you know, I had evolved spiritually, had a few awakenings, you know, was starting to become conscious of what was going on. And I remember leaving that place and feeling like I had been siphoned. Like I just felt so gross and oh, I just couldn't stand it. And I remember I had to go back, not had to, but I guess I chose, I felt like I had to, I chose to go back um, a last time. And this was after I was working with you and I had protections in place and I was more mindful of my energy. And I was like, I had kind of shut myself down, like closed myself off, became a fair day cage. Like before I went there to protect myself and protect my energy and looking back, the experiences were wildly different. I mean, I was still, I didn't stay on the strip the second, the second time, but I was on the strip several times and like around lots of people and and all of the you know normal rigmarole of uh Vegas but I felt completely different because I had those things in place Mm -hmm. yeah and that's you know that's that I use that example because it's such an obvious like spiritual portal right like I mean I'm going to make a lot of enemies right now with what I'm about to say. Sedona, Arizona is another major spiritual portal that is garbage. So when we talk about the vibrational set point, right? The people who go to Sedona that are not awake think it's beautiful and it's like nature and, you know, they're like, la, 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 I went to a shaman thing, you know, and it's, They're like, um, uh, this is going to sound really awful. And I apologize ahead of time for how it's going to come out, but they're yoga spiritual. Okay. They go to yoga. They, you know, drink the juice, you know, they maybe meditate a little, but they're not like working in spirituality, right? They're not like confronting themselves daily with the spiritual riffraff in both directions, right? They're just like, you know, yeah, I got some macrame on my wall and, you know, okay. So those type of spiritual people going to Sedona are like, you know, in the gift shops, buying the little books and the crystals and the, you know, incense and all that stuff, right? And they're, they're, they're having a different kind of experience, but people who go there who actually work in spirituality will find that it is a spiritual dumping ground, People go there to let shit go. Mm -hmm. And so they just go there and they just 
off gas all of their spiritual garbage. And then they leave and they feel better because they've left all their shit behind. And so <laughs> what does that do? It brings the vibration of the area as a whole down. It opens a portal and it allows in negative vibration, low level vibration. I shouldn't and say some negative, of these, but low level vibration. Yeah, some mm -hmm. of these things are super sneaky. So like you could go and be like, ah, I feel so much better. And imagine portal opening and you feel good and you don't know how to close it or the teacher that is taking you there is not teaching you how to close that up after you've let everything go or whatever. There's no no component of that. And then you go home and some of those sneaky polarity buggers, they go with you. They're like, woohoo, free ride. <laughs> totally, 100%. And, you know, and some of those like teachers, mm -hmm might be um energy vampires they may stay connected to you and feed off of your energy use your energy for their magic you know everything is energy so if you sign up with somebody and you allow them into your energy they can manipulate your energy for their benefit. That is an actual thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're headed off to Sedona to have this woo weekend, you know, you got your journal that's got all your chakra crystals on the front of it and you're ready to go. You got your hippie bag and your ganja and you're going to have a great time, right? Mm -hmm. And you get out there and you work with, you know, this, you know, shaman okay and i'm not throwing shamans under the bus i I've, I've personally worked with a shaman my mother-in-law is a shaman i have huge massive respect for shamanism but let's be real okay there's a lot of snake oil salesmen in the spiritual industry and there are a lot of shamans in sedona right so you go there you have this wonderful weekend you leave yourself wide open you're shaman is still connected to you. You go home, you're st still feeling good. And then all of a sudden you just start getting sick, low energy. You don't know what's wrong. Maybe you need to go back to Sedona because you felt so great when you were there. Right. Yeah. And the shaman is like, come here, come back to Sedona. Right. It's sick. It's gross. But if you have the tools to protect yourself, to understand what it is that you're getting yourself into before you actually arrive there, you have an entirely different experience. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I have a ton of family that lives right outside of Sedona, ton of family, huge portion of my family is like within 30 minutes of Sedona. I avoid that place like the plague <laughs> because I just don't want to open myself up to anything attaching to me and then getting the the light bus home to Texas. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't want that at all. So I just avoid those types of situations. Or if I have to go into Sedona, man, I shield up. Like I'm invisibility cloak, man, because I don't want anything to see me. It's okay if I get hit by a car because the driver didn't see me. I'm cool with that. At least I know that the riffraff didn't get me. My body will heal, you know? <laughs> But where was I going with this? The thing is, is you just, you have to pay attention to like what you're getting yourself into. And one of the things that, that I think a lot of these spiritual people that are like either jumping ship or regressing, not regressing, but like shifting into more of like biblical study or religious study or, you know, just religious following they're doing this because they're afraid. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you, you could, you could be very afraid of what is happening to you or what has happened to you or what could happen to you. But the thing you have to remember is it can only hurt you if you allow it. That's right. I think that that needs to be echoed. It can only hurt you if you allow it. Yeah. We have so much power and control. Um, 
within that it's time to claim it. It's time to start taking responsibility for all that is and and claim it and follow the things that, you know, the light that is leading you, the truths that you can feel from the bottom of your toes that are 1000% true for you. Allow that to guide you. And, and I think to allow yourself to ask the questions. So many times we look to other people to tell us, you know, a lot of people look to Heather and I, tell me, tell me what I got to do. Tell me if this is right. (laughs) (laughs) At some point, you have to be able to trust yourself and you got to build that trust. And I also think that you need a tribe too, to help you discern different things. But Anytime that I'm working on something, I'm always going within first before I go to any of my friends and ask them for help. I go in first, try and sort it out on my own, try and get up as much as possible. If I need, you know, Heather to hold the bucket or something, I'll ask her to do that so I can get it out. But I don't ask for advice first and foremost or for them to assist me first and foremost. I look for that within me so I can build that skill. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like I just, I know this kind of like took a dark turn. (laughs) So everybody lift up, take a deep breath. You know, the thing is, let everything else go, cut all those cords, let all the energy go that does not serve you. Exactly. Let it all go. And the thing is, is that like you have free will. There is nothing on the other side that can affect you, hurt you, do anything to you unless you invite it in because you have free will. So when you are doing your work, if you experience something that feels bad or feels nefarious or feels like, oh, I'm not sure about that, deny, decline, get out. Deny, decline, get out. Okay. You can just stop the meditation. You can stop the journey. You can stop the connection. And then you can cut the cord, remove the energy, heal your, you know, clear yourself out and move on with your day, right? You you don't have to, it doesn't have to be hard. It can be very easy, but you you have to be cognizant of what you allow in. Hashtag discernment. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Hashtag free will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Love it. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure that you click that like button, you share it with all of your friends and that you are subscribed. Um, Till next time, everybody. See ya. Bye.